For the first quarter century of the comic book business, publishers tried to capture an audience of children. Marvel Comics, on the other hand, captured the zeitgeist of its own times. And with it, a new generation of more mature readers. I used modern music, I used modern design, I used psychedelic art. I brought surrealism into the mix. I brought expressionism. I brought pop art, optical art. I used everything I could to update comics and, and bring them into today. So what started happening, because of guys like Storenko, is the letters that would come in would come in from college students or are, uh, uh, young people who were studying art. And they would go, wow, this is really great. So an awful lot of young artists were inspired to think of comic books as a form. Jim Steranko had grown up on comic books and paid the bills by doing graphic design for an advertising firm and performing as an escape artist. In 1966, Steranko arrived unannounced at the Marvel offices and convinced Stan Lee to look at his portfolio. He said, I really don't have anything for you, but you're too damn good to let get away. And then he pointed to a rack that was on the wall that held all the Marvel titles. And he said two words that changed my career. Pick one. So I pointed to the worst book that they had. It was Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. They simply didn't know how to handle a James Bond, man from uncle kind of character. So I said, I'll take that guy. And Stan said, it's yours. me, S.H.I.E.L.D. was an open, empty, high canvas that I could do virtually anything, especially experimentation. I did this three-page silent sequence. It began with Nick Fury penetrating an enemy fortress. There wasn't even a thought balloon. It wasn't even a caption. There were no words anywhere. Three pages of silence for the first time in comics. And then he gets killed at the end. I took the pages into production where Saul Brodsky held court and he said, I can't pay you for writing these first three pages. There's nothing here, so I can only pay you for 17. But the writing is there. It's all done visually. I grabbed this guy by his shirt and I said, I'm going to throw you out this window if you don't pay me for those three pages. Well, in his infinite wisdom, he decided to pay me for the three pages and we were cool about it. Jim Steranko, many people consider the Jimi Hendrix of comic book art in the late 60s because just like Hendrix, he came on like a comet, an overnight sensation. And just like Hendrix creates a body of work that its influence and impact is in converse proportion to the actual quantity of comics he turned out. This was one of the first of, the, of my interactive page experiments. Fury has penetrated some enemy fortress. He has to go through a labyrinth and to get from panel one to panel two the reader had to actually transverse the maze at the bottom of the page he's got to turn it because the balloons are now in a vertical configuration and to go to the final panel he has to turn the page completely upside down while the 1960s brought new artistic and storytelling techniques to superhero comic books 
the restrictions of the Comics Code Authority still remained in effect. I created a character, Fury, to develop a romance with. I called her the Countess, Valentina. And in one of my books, I had another wordless page. But every comic book had to pass the certain stringent rules of the comics code. A phone being off the hook was too suggestive. And couples couldn't fully embrace. But a gun in a holster was perfectly acceptable. 